Good morning, everyone. It's a wonderful day that the Lord has made. Amen. Exactly. Every day. It says that His mercies are new. His mercies are new every day. And it said that we should rejoice and again rejoice. Rejoice always. So a few announcements before we start getting into the worship. A uh, few things going on to just make people aware of. Uh, there's these forms here that we have. Some, some of you might have seen them or maybe not. And it's called Let's Keep in Touch. And then there's uh, on the back, there's messages for prayer requests. So if you do have prayer requests, this is usually the better way to do it. Because then what will happen is it will end up in our bulletin for all the prayer warriors to pray. So in your bulletin, in the first page, you'll see the prayer requests that we have going on. Because the effectual fervent prayer of a, a righteous person availeth much, is what the word says. So we should be people of prayer. We should pray for one another, build one another up. It says pray always, right? And so the other way you could do it is to just reach the office. Call the office uh, during the office hours. Uh, if you don't get anyone, leave a message, and they'll add your prayer request to the prayers for uh, that. With that, we have intercessory prayer here. If you want to get involved, intercessory prayer is on Thursdays at 10 in the morning and Monday nights at 6.30 in the evening. And so we usually go about two, two hours of prayer on Thursday and probably about two and a half hours on uh, or about two hours on Monday night, too. So usually our intercessory prayer lasts about that. But if you can make it to any of the prayer times, please come. Because prayer is important. The Lord said that my house shall be a house of prayer, right? So prayer moves mountains. Prayer moves things. God answers prayer. And we believe in prayer. Um, our Wednesday night services, still we break bread and have food. Uh, as a meal together, as a family meal, we start about 5.30, but we don't get to eat until about 5.45 to 6. We'll eat a meal, and then we break off into different groups, whether it be new believers, whether it be the children, whether it be the adults, and we break off into those. So Thursday night's really good. Thursday, we've had four services already of our bilingual services. So Thursday in our chapel... We have a, a Pastor Joe Soto from the uh, New London Church. He comes and he uh, brings a message. Brother Raul does the interpretation right here, and, and we do a, a bilingual service on Thursdays. And, of course, Sundays we have our, our worship service, 1045 in here, but at 930, if you're here early, there's the adult Bible study. Uh, we usually don't have stuff going on for children in the early morning, but during this service, we do. Amen. And one other thing, uh, men's breakfast this Saturday. Usually it's the second Saturday of every month. Here of late, there's been other churches that are co-laboring with us. We're coming together. God's really doing something. This Saturday, it's going to be here at our church here in the social hall, and it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, usually runs to about 9.30. If you have to leave earlier, you can. There's no obligation to stay the whole time, but we'll, we'll have a breakfast, and then there's a message. This Saturday it will be, or this month, it will be uh, Pastor Peter from the Assembly of God Church will be bringing the message, and then... I do believe the following months we're going to be over at his church and someone else will be bringing the message for that one. And then the month after that, if it goes right, we'll be over in New London bringing a, a breakfast to them because they don't really have the resources, but we'll cook it and take it. And that's a men's breakfast fellowship to help encourage the men, build them up in Jesus' name. Amen? You guys ready to worship Jesus? Or actually... I almost forgot. Sorry. We'll get to that. We're going to go ahead and take our morning tithes and offerings at this time. Just kind of get it going. Kind of change it up a little. Normally we do it after the worship, but I, I felt to do it early on. So, you know, 
You know that uh, God loves a cheerful giver. Never out of compulsion. Never grudgingly. We just give as God directs our heart to give. Whether it be of our finances or of our time. If we're working in the church, giving our time, we're helping to to uh, teach or whatever it is, do it all unto God. Je Jesus said in his word, or the word says about Jesus, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus that we give thanks in all things. So we want to give thanks in all things that we do. Do everything as though we're doing it unto Christ himself. So ask the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, the Spirit of Christ, what it is that he would have you to give. And, and like I said, it's not under compulsion. It's not out of a duty or anything. Freely we receive, freely we give. Amen? So, Father, we thank you for touching the hearts of your people, letting them know what it is you would have them to give, Lord, and that they would be blessed in their giving. And, Lord, if they don't have the ability, Lord, bless them so they can become a blessing. Because as children of Abraham, as sons of promise, you said that we would be blessed to be a blessing in the earth. So help each of us, Lord, to be that child, to be blessed, to be a blessing, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And while we're at it, we thank you, Lord, for the worship team. We thank you for where we're going to go today. That you preordained this day, Lord, for us to enter into covenant with you to enter into the Holy of Holies with you, to come to a place where we can worship you and love you as you love us, Lord. Help us to lay aside every weight, everything that would hold us back from coming into your very presence as we begin to worship you and get into your word later. Lord, we want to see you. We want to be with you. We want to experience you, Lord, so that our faith would grow. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You're free to stand or sit, jump, run, whatever you want to do. Just do everything under worshiping him, amen. Good morning, church. It's good to see everybody this morning. We're going to enter into a time of worship here. Let's we'll sing this out together. There were walls between us. By the cross you came and broke it down. You broke it down. There were chains around us. By your grace we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You call me out of the grave. You call me to the light, you call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. 
love is greater.
Every 
He paid the price to redeem us. Amen. Gosh, that's an amazing thing that God would leave heaven, become a man like us, and go through the same things that we would walk through in this life and go and endure the suffering of the cross, which was not something that was for citizens of Rome, but for it was reserved for the worst criminals. And yet he was not a criminal, but he went for all of us to set us free, to pay the price of our redemption, amen? It's an amazing thing. Hallelujah. Well, Go ahead and greet one another. I, I feel today is a good day that we can just, you know, God said it's like koinonia, the fellowship, to love one another, to encourage, greet people, shake a hand, give a hug. Some people want hugs. Some people like to shake hands, right? Real quick, before Pastor Marshall starts his sermon here, I heard it's somebody's birthday in the house today. Where is Johnny at? Where is Johnny? There he is. There he is. Johnny, how old are you today? He's, He's going to be 10. ten. Double digits. They're going to sing happy birthday to you right now. Amen. So if everybody would join along, we're going to sing happy birthday to Johnny up here. Here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Johnny. Happy
birthday, buddy. Thank you. Yes. May it be a blessed day for you in everything you do. Thank you, family in Christ. Amen. <laughs> you hear that? Out of the mouth of babes, the Bible says. He said, thank you, family of Christ. We're a family. It's so true that we're, we have a common father, maybe not the same mothers, but we have a common father, and he is the father, Father God, and we're all part of his family, joint heirs with Christ. Hey, if any of the children would like, they're released now for the children's church. Uh, and whatever will be on there. If you choose to stay, you're welcome to stay as well. Uh, whatever you're comfortable doing. Amen? Wasn't our worship team so good all the time, just getting us into the presence of God, you know? They just uh, can't speak enough on them. They're like awesome. God's really anointed him for that. You know, we all have gifts and talents, each and every one of us. And uh, it's apparent that a lot of them, their gifting is worship and praise because you can feel God's presence in that. Uh, just like many of you have gifts and calling in you, there's talents been put in you. Not my message today. Uh, I think one day maybe we'll do a message on that out of Corinthians and the gifts and the talents that we have. But today I wanted to speak on what's on your screen there, to be found faithful. We're going to start a study in 2 Timothy and go through the different chapters and what it means, uh, the things that we can glean or learn from Paul's letter to Timothy. It really resounds true today, even in our own lives. And in the very first chapter of Second Timothy, where we're going to focus today, it talks about being faithful, that we're to be faithful. And then next week, we'll talk about being a good soldier for Jesus Christ, because in chapter two, he talks about being that good soldier, right? We're soldiers for the kingdom of God. We've been enlisted into his army. And by the way, his army never loses. It, it can never lose because he's always victorious. Right? Amen. Let me get that there. I could hear music in the background. And I knew it wasn't angels. It was just the TV. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. The word is so important for our growth, Lord. It's spiritual food to our spiritual life. It helps build us up. And the more of it we get, Lord, and the more it goes in and we water it with the washing of the water of the word and renewing our minds and we grow in it, Lord, we become like Mr. Olympia in the spirit realm. And the enemies are terrified of us. They're afraid of us because... We know who we are in Christ. Amen? And that comes from his word. So when we look at 2 Timothy, if you have your Bibles, turn there. And there is a place in your, uh, your bulletin that was handed out. If you need to, there's a blank sheet in there if you need to make any notes. And I always encourage take notes because... You can get the word in through this, but then as you begin to get it and reinforce it, it begins to build in you. You know, I, I've heard, and I've said this before here, but it, it's worth saying again, it's like consume the word of God until the word of God consumes you, right? Be so on fire for and passionate for God's word, which, by the way, is Jesus, because in John 1, it did say in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the Word is Jesus. The rhema, rhema and the logos, the, those words were the revealed Word and the written Word. Logos, written Word. We read the written Word, and at times, 
as we get it in, the rhema word comes out. It becomes revealed in our life. It speaks to us. And it speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Abel's blood spoke uh, revenge and justice. But God's blood said grace and mercy, love, right? So it spoke better things than that. And God is a just judge. He will judge. Don't, don't you know, get it twisted, so to say. He, he will. Ain't no one getting away with nothing because he keeps good records. There's books and books, apparently, according to Scripture. But we're going to talk about being faithful today. So in verse 6 through 12, as we read our text, we'll see that it's, it's talking about enduring abuse for the gospel, kind of to put a... a and overflow on it. See, the, the background of this right now is Paul is imprisoned right now. He's imprisoned in Rome. And he's writing this letter to Timothy. And he's concerned about the well-being of the churches that he planted. He's, you know, he's, he said, I've, I've laid my, my life out for the church. I've poured myself out as an offering. I've run my race, he said. And is it going to continue? when I'm gone. When I finish my race here, is it going to keep going? Are they going to be faithful? I've, I've put some things into and poured into this young man called Timothy, but it is also for us today and poured into our life things that we can glean. Are we going to be faithful to God? Are we going to be faithful with the gospel even when there's hardships that come our way? Are we going to hide our light under a bushel or are we going to let it shine bright, right? Because Jesus said that the day, we work in the day, but there's a time coming when night comes where no man can work. And the, the things in our, our world today are really starting to align with a lot of end time prophetic things that we read in Bible. It's, it's really accelerating, the evil that's out there is accelerating more and more, which is bringing the light more into a brighter light, right? Because where sin abound, what? Grace abounds more. So we thank the Lord for that, that he's empowered us and he's strengthened us that we can be faithful, that we can be bold for the things of Christ. So let's read our text in verse 6. We'll start there. Or actually, let's, yeah, let's start in 6. It says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which is given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, in which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. In verse 13, it says, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. And finally, 14, That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. So we're going to break some of this down. What does all this mean? What, are these, what is this good thing that was committed to Timothy? What, what is it that he has to hold fast to? What is it that he needs to be faithful in and to endure and things like that, right? So in verse 6, we see where it said, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So the gift of God in you, to stir up, that word stir up means literally to re-enkindle, inflame one's mind, strength and zeal. In other words, keep it blazing 
and keep the flame of fire burning. And the word is in the present tense. And the present tense means that it's progressive and continuing action. So in other words, it's not something that we do one time. It's we continue to fan the flames within us of the word of God. We fan the flames of the gospel. We fan the flames of his word and we stay the course being faithful to what he's called each of us to do, right? Because we all have a call. Many are called, few are chosen, it says. But we all have a call. We all have a purpose. We're just not kind of passing through trying to get to a point where we can go hang out at the beach and collect seashells or something, right? I mean, there's, there's a reason we're here and that he's called you into his kingdom and into the, the, by the gospel. Each, each of us has a race to run. And so we need to keep that flame burning in us. We need to keep it like on fire. The type of that that you see in the Old Testament, the shadow of it, so to say, the example was in the temple when they built the temple, which point at yourself and say, I am the temple of God, right? I am the temple of God. Corinthians says that. I am the temple of God. In me is the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit, is the power that's like unlimited power. You have so much power in you that it makes devils tremble in fear, right? It, it's so much power that sometimes it will come out and it will set the captives free through your words. And it's not your words, it's his words coming out of your mouth. You're like a conduit. Like a conduit carries electricity and power through it, right? That's like us. So we're the temple of God. Well, in the temple, in the Old Testament, they were to keep the light burning the, the menorah light, which was the light God had there in, in the setup of the Holy of Holies and the holy place and all, that light was to burn perpetually and continually and never go out. That speaks of us in this passion I'm talking about, this stirring it up or rekindling it or keeping the fire burning within us so that we will remain faithful and bold for the gospel despite the hardships that might come our way. In verse 7, we see it says, For God was not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and sound mind. We're going to break those down, right? There's a lot in that one verse right there. So we don't have to fear. God has equipped us, right? We're equipped for every good work. We're equipped to accomplish what he has. You know, every military known to man, at least in the natural realm, they don't train their soldiers to lose. Everyone trains to win. And it's no different with the kingdom of God. We are trained to succeed and be victorious. But the interesting thing with this is we already know by faith we can't lose. There's no way that the enemy of God or the enemies of God can succeed against God. They tried in heaven and got kicked out. His name was Lucifer or Satan, the devil. He tried and there was war in heaven and he was kicked out. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning. So now he came to earth. And he's still trying to war against God and God's people. But he loses. We're always victorious. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Right? We can't lose. We're always victorious. He causes us to be. And so his army won't lose. Even though men train their armies to not lose, sometimes they do. But not in the kingdom of God. So he said, in light of a lot of this stuff, he says, don't fear. That word fear means to be timid, fearfulness, or cowardice, right? He's saying here, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, fearfulness, or cowardice. We don't have that type of spirit. The righteous, it says, are as bold as a lion, right? As bold as a lion. 
we're bold in Christ. This power that it talks about, that it says in this verse, the Spirit's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and sound mind. The power is a word that's in the Greek called dunamis, where we get our word dynamite. It's explosive power. It's the inherent ability to do anything. It means force, miraculous power, ability, abundance, might, miracle power, strength, violence, mighty work, inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature, right? Or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth power for performing miracles, moral power, and excellence of soul. So I really like the part where it says power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. We have a new nature now. We take upon the nature of Christ, right? We're not like we were. It says old things have passed away. Behold, we've become new, right? I think another area Paul said, put off the old man and put on Christ. It's like putting a jacket on, right? We put on Christ. We walk like Christ. We speak like Christ. And, and we have to know his word to be able to do that right? As we know his word, it comes out of us, it bubbles out, and it overflows, and we speak, and we're bold. This word love is a word called agape. It's unconditional love. He's given us that type of love, an unconditional love, and in the Greek, that means brotherly love, affection, goodwill, love, benevolence, even towards our enemies. It's that kind of love. That would overlook it. We don't have to hang out with them. But he said we should love them. And this love, it's not a love of our emotions. It's a love of our minds and our own will. This agape love is in accordance with our, our mental capacity and our will. We choose to do it. We choose to overlook wrongs that people have done. We choose to do that because that's what Christ said we should do. He says, hey, if one, someone smacks you on the left cheek, offer the right. If someone steals your coat, give them another one. Because what? Because God's got our back. He takes care of us. Paul lived that example, and he's telling Timothy now, and us today as we read, he says, hey, walk in that type of love. That's the type of love God has given you that you can forgive people, you can overlook the wrongs they've done. Is that not the prayer that he taught? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Forgive us for our sins and forgive those that sin against us, right? We're asking them to forgive our enemies, the ones that sin against us. So it's that type of love. And then... He said we had a sound mind. This sound mind means in the Greek a disciplined mind, self-control, an admonishing or calling to soundness of mind, to moderation and self-control. So we regulate ourselves, right? Pastor Larry always said what? Check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? You don't want to get wrecked. We, we, we can kind of have some self-control in things. We can be overindulgent or we can have restraint. It's all up to us. God's given us. He says with every temptation known to man, he's made a way of escape. We just got to take the escape route, right? And if we keep missing it, we just say, Lord, forgive me. His mercies are new every day and his grace is abundant. And we say, Lord, help me to see the escape route next time. So I don't keep walking through this same stupidity that I keep doing. But there's grace. It's not anything you can do yourself or force yourself into a mold. That's religion. It's freedom in Christ and say, Lord, change me from the inside out. Help me to grow. Help me to see these things that so easily keep me from all that you want me to do and be. Right? So Paul's telling them, be faithful in these things. These are the things that Paul was telling Timothy and tells us today. 
In verse 8, he says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor on his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. He said, share with me in the sufferings. So that tells me that sometimes there's suffering when you, you will go to try to share the gospel, sharing the gospel with people or being a light. But God's a shield about you, a very present help in time of need. The righteous are as bold as lions, as I said. You can go out and be a light and share and know full well that God's for you and not against you. He's the shield about you and a very present help in time of need. Years ago, over in Pismo, I was standing in a, the uh, apartment where I lived. And uh, I would witness to everybody. Gospel was just going to everybody and, and anyone, including the animals, because it said, preach this gospel to all creation. So I'd tell the dogs, the cats, the birds, the people. It didn't matter. People probably thought I was crazy. But God says he takes the foolish things to confound the wisdom of the wise. Well, I was talking to this guy named Bob. I said, hey, Bob, you know, God really wants to get a hold of you, man. He, want, he wants you to become part of his family. And Bob's standing there like this. And I'm going like, whoa, Bob's tensed up. And so then I keep telling him a little, and then Bob steps back, and he's kind of got one of these, and I'm going like, oh, my, here. I'm going to get ready to do my whatever, right? And, and I felt the Holy Spirit say, hey, ain't I a shield about you? Oh, okay, Lord. So I put my hands down. Bob swung at me, and three times his fist stopped about right here. There wasn't no one by me, but it was like a hand was right here, and it went three times. Now tell me that God don't have power, that he's not willing to protect his people when you're out there doing what he says. He'll do it. And I'm not, you know, he's not a respecter of persons. He'll do it for anyone. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Endure hardship for the gospel's sake, he's saying. And hardship could be they spit at you or they, they belittle you or they don't like you. It's all right. God likes you. As a matter of fact, God actually loves you very, very much. Right? So, so be bold, not ashamed. Paul in Romans 1.16, he said it like this. And this is why we have to be bold and not ashamed. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. It's the means in which God has chosen to bring salvation to people. And he's chosen to use us to speak it to them and to be the light. Right? Some of us have calls to be evangelists and we'll reach lots of people. Some of us, we may only reach one or two or our own family. But that's okay. Walk in what God has for you. I heard a story years ago and I've shared this here too. There was a school teacher that led three people to Jesus their whole life. Three people. One of them was a guy named Billy Sunday. Billy Sunday went on to lead tens of thousands of people to the Lord. One of the tens of thousands that Billy Sunday led to the Lord was a guy named Billy Graham. And Billy Graham reached millions. So it doesn't matter how small or how significant God will reach. You never know the one person that you may reach what they're going to do and what they're going to do and what they're going to do. Right? You could cause a chain reaction. But we got to be faithful to God and not shirk back from these things because God's for you. If God's for you, no one can be against you. Amen? Because he says it is the power of God to salvation. Basically, just being believers in Christ and trying to walk in what we know, let our light shine, we are an affront to the world system. It just don't like us. I don't know why. We're all very sweet and likable people, right? You guys are all sweet and likable. I don't understand it. It's like we're nice, we smile, and they still get mad at you. It's like, what gives? Where are you from? Climb out from under a rock. I don't know. I'm like, wow. 
So we have to be faithful. So in verse 9, as we continue our little journey here, it says, For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Notice here it says, Without ceasing he makes mention of his prayers. In the old King James, it also says there that where it says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, right? You've been called with a holy calling. Now check this out. This Greek word saved right there, right? He has saved us. That Greek word's amazing. This is all the things that that word means. To heal, to preserve, to save, do well, be whole, to save, keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, one from injury or peril, to save a suffering one from perishing, that is, one suffering from disease, to make well, heal, restore to health, to preserve one who is in danger of destruction, to save or rescue. That's what that word means, saved. That's a lot. That word means who has saved us. That, you could say who has healed us, who has delivered us from destruction, who has kept us, right? That's what that means. And called, it means this, to call aloud, utter in a loud voice, to invite. And get this, to give a name to you. He has saved us and given a name to us with a holy calling. What's the name he gave us? The name above every name. He gave us the name of Jesus. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will give it to you. Right? So when you walk out there spreading the gospel, it's like, Lord, give me souls. Help me to salt my words so that they become thirsty for you. Amen? Because he's given us the name above every name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And notice he says he prays. Prayer is important. Like I was saying earlier about our intercessory prayer, prayer moves mountains. Prayer is merely talking to God just like we're having, I'm talking to you today, that's like you can talk to God. And you do say laws and pause a little and listen to him. And he'll speak because he's called you. It says he'll call loud sometimes. Have any of you ever heard him say your name? Uh, I remember once sitting in my chair and I heard very loud, Marshall! And I was like, what was that? Right? years ago but sometimes he'll do that it's pretty amazing got my attention that's for sure so verse 13 through 18 of 2 Timothy chapter 1 this is where it's talking about holding fast to the Lord Jesus Christ kind of that section 13 one of the things verse 13 says, now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in Romans still. Let's get back to Timothy. So 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 13. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. And uh, old, old King James says, hold fast to, the, to sound doctrine. So hold fast means sound doctrine, the doctrine that you've heard from the Lord here out of his word. Hold fast to that. Hold fast to the truth that you are above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You're blessed when you leave. You're blessed when you come. All the promises that he said, hold fast to them. Hold fast to that he said that he's a shield about you. Hold fast to that, 
the thing where it's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And where I am weak, he is strong, right? Hold fast to the gospel message of the love of Christ and speak it forth. Hold fast to the sound doctrine, right? Hold fast to the doctrine of grace, the unmerited favor of God that overlooks our faults and also is a teacher that teaches us to deny ungodly lusts and things that hinder us, right? Hold fast to God's mercies. All these are doctrines that we hold fast to. In verse 14, Paul said, that good thing that I committed, keep by the Holy Spirit that's in you. So this good thing, what could that be? I was asking myself that when I was putting this together. Lord, what is this good thing you're talking about? Because originally when I read this before, I was putting it together. In verse 14, it says that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. I was thinking it meant the, the Holy Spirit, but he, he went on and said, keep it by the Holy Spirit that's in you. So as I was pondering it, and I'm thinking, Lord, what is that? This is what I think it means. The word of truth or the word of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The doctrine received of the truth. Be faithful with it all. That is the, positive, the, the deposit of these things into Timothy. We too have these things to keep. So it's, it's the word of God is the deposit that we keep by the spirit of God. And when the, the word and the spirit come together, that's when fireworks happen, dynamite, Right? Because the Spirit will lead and guide, comes along to help us to understand and remember all the words that Christ spoke. And then when we're talking to people, it will come out. And you talk to them, right? And, and you don't have to feel inadequate that you don't know enough word. Just the fact that you've accepted Christ, you know enough that will get someone saved. All you have to do is introduce them to him. A lot of times, some of my favorite little lines to lead into conversation with people is say, hey, do you know my friend? And they go, I don't know. Who is your friend? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. And then I tell them, it's Jesus. And then they go, Jesus? Yeah, have you ever heard of him? Some say no, which is kind of amazing in our day and age that they would say no. But, but some says, yeah. And then you just get to share some of them get mad and say hogwash and then you just the bible says shake off the dust from your shoes and say i'll be praying for you and you move on hopefully they don't do to you like bob tried to do with me but nonetheless god's for you and not against you right he would keep that from happening okay so a few other things about this being faithful christ is a faithful witness it says and we're to be Christ-like, right? That's what Christian means, to be like Christ. In Revelation, so I'm just going to read a few scriptures that tie into this. Revelations 1.5, the Lord said this in his word. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. So Jesus was a faithful witness. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, way back in the books of Moses, it's the fifth book of the Bible, Deuteronomy 7, verse 9 says this, Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commands or his commandments. And 1 Thessalonians 5.24, we'll read. He who calls you is a faithful who also will do it. I like that one. He who calls you is faithful 
who will also will do it. What will he do? He'll be with you. He'll help you. He'll guide you. He'll give you the right words to say. He'll give you the power in demonstration sometimes as you're out there. You know, the gifts of the Spirit, they work a lot more abundantly outside the church walls than they do inside. Because you'll run into more people out there that need to be healed and need to be set free. And it will work because God wants to reach them. We're going to teach on the gifts here soon, probably in the next month. Uh, so be faithful despite any hardships. And here's something that the Word of God says to the church in Revelations 2.10. This is the persecuted church is who he was uh, mentioning this to. It was the, the church in Smyrna. But in verse 10, it says this. Do not fear any of those things which are about to, you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. So he's saying, no, of course, this has happened in the past. But it also speaks of the time to come when Antichrist comes to the forefront. And if we happen to still be here, we could suffer some persecution. I don't know, because I'm not 100% sure of when the rapture takes place. There's a lot of scriptures that support all three of them. That's why I always say, be ready. I, I believe in the pan-tribulation. It's all going to pan out. I just don't know when it is, because scripture has so many scriptures that support all three views I'm like I don't know so but then he says in the rest of verse 10 be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life we have a crown of life coming if we're faithful into the end even if into death now now you could take that in many ways be faithful until death well we're all going to die Everybody has to meet this person called death. And he is a person because it says he's the last enemy to be cast into the lake of fire, according to Scripture. Everyone's going to run into that guy or whatever he is. He's, he's some type of being, person of some kind, not necessarily human, but, but death is a person. It says it's given unto men once to die, then to judgment. So we'll stand before God then. But he says if we're faithful unto then, that's why I said, be faithful. We get a crown of life. Be faithful to him. I really like this. Revelation 17, 14, it says this. Remember earlier I said, many are called, but few are chosen. If you're not chosen, don't feel left out because this says you're still very much part of what's going on. 17, verse 14, it says this. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. So the called are with him, the chosen are with him, and the faithful are with him. And you could be all three. You might be just one of those. But you'll be with him when he comes back. Amen? Almost done. So we're to be like Christ. We're preserved, according to Psalms 31, to be faithful. God preserves the faithful, it says. So when we're faithful, he's preserving us. He's watching over us. He's protecting us. In Psalm 101, verse 6, he says his eyes are upon the faithful. I can get the worship team to come. I'm about to land this airplane. Proverbs 14.5 will read as we're going to close. Proverbs 14.5 says this. A faithful witness does not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. The faithful witness here, a witness is one who knows the truth and reveals it. So being a witness you reveal the truth, right? You know the truth, you reveal the truth. 
But a faithful witness is one who does not bend the truth in any way, does not hide nothing that needs to be known, right? So he speaks the truth in love. Sometimes things we speak are hard for people, but it needs to be spoken. We don't bend it or sugarcoat it, so to say. That's a faithful witness, right? Amen. So we want to be faithful to our Lord and Savior. Be faithful to the doctrines that are sound and walk them out and walk this course and be a light to the lost. Amen. Guys ready to sing one more song here? Let's worship of Jesus. Name above every name. Because there's victory in him. Amen. We have victory in Christ.
Jesus, we can't lose. We're on the winning side. Amen. We just have to be faithful. Keep walking with the King and be a blessing, right? Hey, if anyone here needs prayer, we're here. You know, come up, we'll pray for you. We'll pray and agree with you. There's power in agreement. There's power in prayer. But we'll pray for you. And uh, also remember, there's bread in the back. There's things back there if you guys need any bread. There might be a few pastries. There might still be some tomatoes left in there from, from uh, the Newsom Garden. He got like a bumper crop. A lot better than my garden was doing. But uh, there's that out there and there's some other stuff. But if you need prayer, really, come up. We'll pray with you. If you don't know Jesus... We'll introduce you to him. Amen. Don't leave earth without him. And yeah, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for your people, Lord. And as Johnny said, the family of God, the family of believers. We're a family, Lord. And Lord, help us to encourage one another, build one another up, and be there for one another in times of need. And Lord, as we walk around, help us to be attentive to the things you're trying to do and people you're trying to reach. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Love y'all. Nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah.